Walking. It's not so bad. It's free and a pretty reliable way for most bipeds to get from A to B. But it's 2019 and technology is here to give you a hand in getting around. Not only can personal electronic vehicles spare your dogs from a pavement pounding, they can also save you a bunch of time. And as they say, time is money. So who knows, maybe these things can even pay for themselves. Maybe. So whether you're trying to hustle to get to college on time, you just want to take the drudgery out of your commute, or just straight up want to avoid traffic, we have five recommendations that will help you crush any commute. For the shorter journey, the Miles Dual is perfect. As electric skateboards go, it's pretty small, and at 12.5 pounds, it's pretty light too. In fact, it's small enough you might even be able to fit it in, or at least on, a backpack. But even carrying it around by hand won't feel like you're dragging around a motorized ball and chain. What I really like about the Miles, though, is that despite its diminutive size, it still offers big board speed and range. If you dare, you can get this thing up to, and maybe even beyond, 22 miles an hour and it'll last for around 18 miles, if you ride it cautiously. I don't know if you've ever ridden an electric skateboard, but when you get up to around 16, 17 miles an hour is about the time when I start to realize there's not a hell of a lot between my flesh suit and the concrete whizzing below beneath it. That's all to say that this thing might not be the fastest skateboard out there, but it's plenty fast enough. Beware though, the shorter deck does mean you're gonna have a shorter stance, and that does take some getting used to. But there is a small kicktail, which means it's perfect for dropping off and maybe even popping up small curbs, which are simple things that can stump even the most fancy of longboards. Add in the fact that you can swap the batteries out, choose from a choice of grip tape designs, and let's be real, dazzle people with those delightfully hot pink wheels, and you've got yourself a pretty good short range, campus friendly solution. I will say, given its size and speed, I do find riding this thing can get a little intense, but it'll certainly wake you up in the morning. And if you don't need as much speed or range, you could even save some cash with a slightly slower, lower range, $500 single motor version. If you want something that's a little easier to ride and certainly more laid back, then you want to check out the Riptide R1X. The 32 inches Riptide's board is mid-size, so that's about five inches longer than the miles. And this makes all the difference, especially if you prefer a wider, more stable stance. The R1X is modeled after the cruiser type analog boards, which means it's literally designed for rolling around town. I'm also quite partial to the wood finish and the retro surfboard stylings. What I like about this board though, isn't the 22 miles per hour top speed or the 14 mile range, although I do like both of those things. It's just that it's a lot of fun to ride. Carving feels natural, encouraged almost, and the steeper kicktail means it is a delight for dropping off of curbs or even popping up small ones, or maybe even the cheeky little lolly. Portability is also a factor here. Despite the extra length, it actually naturally hangs around your hand when you want to stand it on its tail to carry. There's also a handle, which makes it perfect for carrying between rides or even upstairs. At around $1,000, it is not an impulse purchase, but it's pretty much fairly priced compared to the competition. And hey, at least you're going to stand out from the boosted crowd. If you live in a large city in the US, there's a good chance you've seen an uptick in the number of electric scooters. And if you live in a city like Oakland, then they're pretty much unavoidable. In fact, I'd wager there's even a few in the lake over there. Rental scooters like Bird or Lime are great for occasional use, but unless you live near a transit hub, they can often be quite hard to find, even if they show up on the app. Owning an electric scooter is pretty much the only way to guarantee that you've got access to one, but they're perfect for longer commutes, even those with the dollop of public transit in the middle. There are many models to choose from, with Xiaomi and Segway making popular options. But I also like the Boosted 5, from U Scooter for a number of reasons. First of all, it's a good all-rounder. U Scooter actually makes a couple of models, but the five offers a good balance between range, 24 miles, top speed, 25 miles, and portability, around 23 pounds, which isn't the lightest, but it's certainly on the lighter side. With the five though, you're actually getting a little bit more power than most. It's pretty common for scooters to have a 250 watt motor, whereas the five comes with a 500 watt motor, which means it takes on hills with a little bit more grunt, and you're gonna get regenerative braking on the downhill. At $1,200, it's not the cheapest scooter on the market. It's not even the cheapest one that U-Scooter makes. But like I said, it's a good all-rounder that will tackle a wide variety of commutes. As an example, if I rent a scooter on my daily commute, it costs me about $2 per journey. So by that crude metric, this thing would roughly pay for itself in about a year. If you like the idea of a scooter, but you want something with a little bit more grunt, then the Revfund Boosted is the one. 
The flagship feature here is a 1500 watt motor, so there's a reason why Booster describes this thing as vehicle grade. At first glance at the specs, you might wonder where that power is going. With a range of 22 miles and a top speed of 24, it's not that different from the U-Scooter. But with the Rev, it's more about how you get that power and where it'll take you. Booster's actually based here right in the bay, just over in San Francisco. And it seems pretty clear to me that those famous hills are the inspiration behind the Rev. Your average garden variety 500 watt scooter might get you up that incline, but it's gonna putter along every single yard until you hit the flat again. The Rev, on the other hand, eats those hills for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The trade-off here is that this thing's heavy. At 46 pounds, you probably don't want to lug it up too many flights of stairs. Although, to be honest, it could probably ride up them. Don't try that. And thanks to its slightly bigger wheels and extra wide tires, this thing actually goes off-road. I'm not sure if it's recommended, but I actually took it on some small trails and it handled them like a champ. Most scooters are designed for the last mile, whereas the Boosted Rev wants all the miles. It's basically a mini moped, and at $1,600, the price reflects that. While most scooters will wobble when a car goes past, with the Boosted Rev, it's likely you that's passing the cars. Scooters and skateboards are fun and great for the casual commute, but if you want something that's gonna take you almost anywhere, then you probably want a bike. An electric one, of course. At over $2,200, the Vectron D8 by turn is a solid investment, but bikes are pricey. Even push bikes can cost more than this. With the Vectron, as with all electric bikes, you can choose between riding under your own steam or letting the 250 watt motor pick up some of the slack, especially uphill. With the Vectron D8, you have a choice of eight gears to help you along different types of terrain. There's also five levels of assist mode. For gentler rides, or those of you that still want a bit of a workout, some of the lower settings will offer a modest assist, but you'll still be able to burn some of those calories. Crank this thing up to level five though, and you'll suddenly feel like Superman, with even the biggest of hills suddenly feeling like a Sunday saunter in the park. On the flat, this thing feels like a two-wheeled equivalent of an airport moving walkway. Pedestrians just fade away. Meanwhile, other cyclists will think you've got thighs of steel as you effortlessly glide past them without breaking a sweat. Once you get where you're going, or if you really can not avoid a stint on public transit, yes, I'm talking about you, Bay Bridge, then the Vectron folds down to a manageable size. Simply drag it along behind you. There's even a handy stowaway space on the back of the bike to store your backpack. For even more information on every one of these recommendations, along with the rest of our outdoor buying guides, head to the website or subscribe.